Creatine. 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 Creatine is so important. Creatine. Should everyone be on creatine? I should creatine, please. It feels like everyone is suddenly talking about creatine out of seemingly nowhere. But is it actually worth the hype? What even is creatine? Are there any downsides to taking creatine? And should you even be taking it if you're not a gym goer? I'm a dietitian and in this video I'm going to break down what the research actually says about creatine without the bro science and sharing my own experience with taking it as well so that you can make an informed decision. So if you haven't already please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. Every single like and subscribe and even comment really matters to me. I am a small channel at the moment, but I really want to grow so that all the information I share can reach more people and help more people, most importantly. So I appreciate any support there. So let's get into it. What even is creatine? So creatine is actually a naturally occurring compound made in your liver and your kidneys and your pancreas and it's mostly stored in your muscles. So it actually helps regenerate ATP, which is your body's source of quick energy, especially during things like intense workouts. And you can also get creatine from small amounts of it, from foods like red meat and fish. But in saying that, not nearly as much as what's found in a creatine supplement. So. Let's first move on to what the actual proven benefits of creatine are and all the claims that I'm going to be sharing in terms of the benefits. These are all going to be from well-controlled studies or systematic reviews or meta-analyses. So let's start with one of the more obvious ones. Creatine helps to improve both strength and power, like actual measurable increases in how much you can lift and pull and push, etc. You can train with more intensity, feel stronger and get more out of the same workout, whether that's lifting weights or doing an intense sweaty Pilates class or even just surviving a Monday. Okay, so no, you won't bulk up and grow traps to your neck just from taking creatine unless it's the vibe that you're going for and you know, you're working towards that, but creatine in itself isn't just going to magically make that happen. Okay. Now the meta-analyses studies show that creatine leads to consistently higher strength outcomes across nearly all resistance based studies. And this I found really interesting. They've also shown that creatine users consistently outperform non-creatine users in strength training across a range of different studies. Like we're talking, reps, heavier lifts, and better training volume over time. And even in trained individuals, the gains were actually measurable from taking creatine. So it's actually one of the few supplements with consistent, repeatable performance enhancing effects in both men and women. Okay, so the second benefit or proven benefit of creatine that I want to mention today is muscle mass gains. Creatine actually helps support lean, toned, and defined muscles. So the kind that actually helps your clothes fit better and improves your metabolism and makes you feel strong AF, which who doesn't want that? You know, I love feeling strong even if I don't necessarily look that way. So it doesn't turn you into a protein shake chugging gym bro. What it actually does is it helps your body recover faster and train harder essentially. And that's what builds shape rather than size. So in the research, people supplementing with creatine consistently gained more lean body mass than those who didn't. But we're not talking, you know, we're talking about a few kilos over months of training. No one's waking up with surprise biceps or suddenly, you know, 10 kgs heavier on the scales. And it's also important to note here too that creatine doesn't directly build muscle like a steroid would, but it helps you train harder, recover faster, and push past plateaus, which over time is what leads to better muscle adaptations. So it also increases intramuscular water content, which may slightly plump up the muscle early on. But more importantly, it supports cellular hydration. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about that later on. But this is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. So it's nothing to stress about. Okay, so moving on to the third proven benefit of taking creatine. And this is actually the one that made me the most interested in taking creatine. And that benefit is around brain function and cognition. So this is the part that almost no one talks about, or at least didn't before there was this huge crazy boom around creatine recently. But creatine isn't just a gym thing, it's actually a brain thing too. Because your brain burns through ATP or energy like crazy, especially when you're under stress or you're sleep deprived or you're in deep focus mode and studying and all things like that, right? That involves a lot of brain power. So supplementing with creatine has actually been shown to support things like memory and reaction time and mental clarity and even cognitive performance as a whole particularly in situations where your brain's under pressure. So 
Yes, creatine can help you lift more and last longer in your workouts, but it might also help you think faster and remember your passwords and survive those 3 p.m. meetings, right? So that's particularly helpful, especially as we age. So in randomized trials, creatine improved working memory, like I mentioned before, and mental performance, especially during sleep deprivation or mentally demanding tasks. So also another excellent thing for mums out there with newborns who don't get a whole lot of sleep. So if you're someone who is tired of walking into a room and forgetting why you're there, creatine might help. And just to be clear too, these results that it has shown to have on cognitive performance and memory and all of these things has actually shown to have a positive benefit in older adults as well. So it's not just for young people, honestly, it can benefit so many different people at different age ranges. Now the fourth proven benefit of creatine that I want to talk about today is muscle recovery. Now I don't know about you, but I love a supplement that does more than one job and creatine delivers on exactly that. So it helps reduce muscle damage and soreness and inflammation after intense training. Now this means faster recovery, it means less DOMS, which I didn't even know what that meant until a couple of months ago, <laughs> and more consistency in your workouts. Because let's be honest, skipping a session because your legs are still crying from, you know, Monday is not the vibe, especially when you're someone like me who basically only likes to train legs. I mean, I do upper body, but if I had it my way, I'd be doing legs every day. So the studies show that creatine users experience reduced muscle soreness and also faster return to baseline strength between sessions. Now, for those of you who aren't too worried or focused on the recovery side of things, I know I used to be like that and really neglect that part, but here are some facts that might actually change your mind around that. In a sense, recovery actually is the thing that leads to growth in your muscles, physiologically speaking anyway. And that's because when you exercise, especially resistance training, you're creating tiny tears in your muscle fibers. So the act of lifting weights breaks things down and the growth really happens after, during the rest and recovery stage, when your body repairs and adapts. So that is essentially why recovery is when your body actually rebuilds and stronger too. That repair process, known as muscle protein synthesis, requires rest and good nutrition and cellular energy, which is that ATP, and creatine helps by replenishing ATP for starters more quickly too than if you weren't taking it, so your cells can get back to work rebuilding and adapting sooner. On the flip side, poor recovery can actually lead to stalled progress in terms of muscle growth, because if you don't recover properly, whether that's due to things like poor sleep or under eating or skipping your recovery days, we're all guilty of that, then your body stays in a stressed, inflamed state. And so this can actually blunt muscle gains and reduce performance and even increase the risk of injury. So creatine supports recovery by reducing muscle damage and inflammation, which helps you bounce back and train faster essentially and be more consistent with it. And that consistency is what leads to the long-term progress. So increased recovery is another major benefit of creatine. Now the fifth benefit that I wanna share is support during caloric deficit. So basically when you're cutting or you are trying to lean out. Now this is actually a sneaky but powerful benefit. I haven't yet heard anyone else mention this. I'm sure it's probably been mentioned, but I haven't seen it. And that is that creatine can actually help preserve your strength and muscle while you're in a calorie deficit. So that essentially means better performance, less muscle loss and more toned looking results without feeling flat or weak or like your soul is leaving your body mid leg day. Now in another video that I'll be posting in the coming weeks, I talk about the right amount of protein to take depending on your goals and your training and all of the things. And one of the things I mentioned in that is that, you know, when you are trying to lean down as well as build muscle mass or maintain muscle mass, you do require slightly higher protein intakes and it can be slightly challenging for some. So creatine is an amazing way to actually help with that and help you maintain a lot of your muscle, which is also the most metabolically active thing in your body. So it's really important to retain when you're wanting to lose fat. So creatine can just assist in that and make it a lot easier. Okay, so what does the science say? Multiple studies confirm that creatine helps maintain lean muscle mass and performance even while dieting, which is a huge win when you're focusing, you know, if you're bodybuilding and you're focusing on aesthetics or fat loss is your goal. All right, let's move on to some of the potential downsides, I guess you could call it, and what has also been debunked in this area. So the first one being water retention, which I'm sure you've all heard about, that also can lead to weight gain. So yes, you might gain a little bit of water weight at first, 
But before you start blaming creatine for your jeans feeling tighter, here's what is actually happening when you first start taking it. So basically that water weight is intramuscular water, meaning that it's going into your muscle, into your muscle cells, and not just floating around your belly making you feel like a balloon. This type of water retention can actually make your muscles look fuller and more defined, not bloated and squishy. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, even if the scales have gone up a tinsy bit. An increase in your weight on a scale does not directly reflect fat gain or anything like that. And that's also why I really don't like scales. And also for most people, this water retention actually balances out after a few weeks. So you're not gaining fat, it's just hydration, not inflammation, and it's hydration in your muscles. So it's not a bad thing. So if you think that the creatine is making you look puffy, it is probably not the creatine. And it's more likely the 14 margaritas you had in the four hours of sleep that you got. Now moving on to the second one, kidney health. This one actually comes up a lot surprisingly and well, in a way it's understandable, but creatine's connection to kidney damage has been mentioned in a lot of outdated case reports, but this has actually been thoroughly investigated in the research since, and long-term studies in healthy individuals consistently show that creatine does not harm kidney function. So if your kidneys are healthy, then creatine is considered safe, and even with long-term use, at standard doses. Now that said, if you do have any pre-existing kidney issues or concerns, I would definitely recommend speaking with your doctor first before starting any supplement, because this could make that worse. But if you're a healthy individual with no kidney issues, then it shouldn't negatively impact your kidneys, okay? The next one I wanna bring up is digestive upsets because now these are real, but they're also really rare. So for most people, creatine is super well tolerated, but occasionally it can cause digestive discomfort in some. So the most common issue that has been reported is bloating, cramping, or even a little bit of nausea. And this usually happens when people start with really high doses of creatine or they take it on an empty stomach. So just some things to keep in mind. But if you have felt a little bit off after taking creatine, then here's some things that might help. So I would recommend dropping down your dose of creatine to about three grams a day if you're having more than that. You don't actually need to start big to see results with that. It's more about consistency. You can also switch to a micronized creatine monohydrate form if you're not already having that because it does tend to dissolve better and it has a smoother texture and it tends to be easier on the stomach or tolerated better. Another tip would just be to mix it really well in plenty of water. So don't just have a little bit of water with it, try and have a full decent sized cup. And you can even add it to a smoothie or a juice or something like that. Don't just dry scoop it or toss it with a spoonful of yogurt and hope for the best, okay? You do wanna have it with water. You wanna stay hydrated when you are having creatine. And if you're taking it as a pre-workout, maybe avoid pairing it with soup acidic or carbonated drinks because they can actually make things worse. Now in saying all of that, these symptoms in people who do experience some are usually temporary and they are pretty mild and for most people adjusting how and when you take it is enough to fix it. Okay, moving on to the next one, the loading phase myth. So you have probably heard that to get creatine to work that you need to do a loading phase initially. So usually what I've heard people say is, you know, having about 20 grams per day split into multiple doses. I've actually heard even more than that in some, but yeah, split into multiple doses for five to seven days, for example, and then drop down to three to five grams. That recommendation came from a lot of older studies that showed a faster increase in muscle creatine stores with high doses early on. And yes, you know, it does saturate your muscles faster when doing that, but recent research shows that you can actually reach the exact same saturation levels by just taking three to five grams per day consistently. So it just takes a little longer, usually three to four weeks instead of one. And the key thing there again is consistently, if you only have creatine here and there, you're not gonna get results. You need to be taking it daily for a long period in order to see those results. Now the benefits of not having to do the loading phase is you know, fewer side effects like bloating and cramps and nausea, less waste as well because your body can't actually store 20 grams all at once anyway. And it's way more sustainable and less obvious water retention too. So unless you really, really need your muscles creatine loaded in a few days, like you've got a powerlifting meet next weekend, then you know the daily dose is just as effective minus the digestive drama and all the other things that I mentioned. So thing to remember is slow and steady wins the saturation and saves your stomach and your wallet too. Okay, so before I get into my own experience, I do wanna just briefly talk about one thing and that is that not all creatine supplements are created equal. 
There are tons of products out there with added fillers and weird blends or inflated price tags that actually aren't worth it. So a prime example of this is a very recent wide report revealed that during the independent lab test that was commissioned by Subco, it revealed that four out of six popular creatine gummy brands sold on Amazon contained little to no creatine. So one of those examples is Happy Yum Gummies, a top seller, which has actually had over 50,000 units sold, and they contained a mere 0.005 grams per serving. So under 0.1% of what of the five grams that was advertised. And other failing brands include Divinus Labs, I don't even know how to say that, I'll post it here, EcoWise and Vita Botan, some with zero detectable creatine. And now Foods confirmed that half of the tested gummy brands failed to meet label claims and showed signs of creatine degradation as well. That can happen because of things like heat and moisture used in gummy production, which can actually degrade creatine into creatinine. So if you are going to take creatine, make sure it's a high quality creatine that is third party tested because purity really matters here. The form it's in also matters and making sure there's no contaminants and harmful chemicals in there too. I've actually made a separate video breaking down exactly how to choose a good supplement because there is a lot of things to consider when you are choosing one. Uh, and it's a general, it's not specific to creatine, but it applies to any supplement. So I'll link that below for you so you can check that out and make sure that you're choosing the right one if you do decide to take creatine or even if you're already having it and you didn't consider some things, definitely check that video out. So let's get into my personal experience with it. Do I take it? Do I like it? Have I noticed any benefits? Will I keep taking it? All the things. So yes, I mean, you probably gathered throughout this video that I do take it and I have actually been, I take it regularly now but not because I want to bulk, but because I do train, you know, three to five times a week, strength-based training, and I do value strength and recovery and brain health above all. And to be honest, when I started, I didn't really notice any puffiness in, in my muscles or any weight gain, to be fair. I don't weigh myself regularly for a very good reason because I don't think it's necessary. So I didn't really see any shifts in the scales because I wasn't tracking that. But visually, I didn't feel like I gained anything, which was a nice positive. But what I did notice pretty soon after taking it, I can't remember exactly when I started noticing changes, but I do remember it was fairly soon after and I've been consistent ever since. It's probably been a couple months of me taking it consistently now. And what I noticed the most is that even in the afternoon where I've previously been quite exhausted from the day and tired and you know I sometimes struggle to do a really good long proper workout at the gym my stamina was just so much better after taking creatine it didn't feel like you know when you have a pre-workout and you get the jitters and you feel like I don't know I don't like that feeling it wasn't like that for me it just felt like I had like a steady release of energy that allowed me to go for longer and push a little bit harder and make it through all of the sets and reps that I wanted to within that workout, which was a really nice change. And I definitely have noticed an increase in my clarity and in my focus and in my ability to retain things since taking it. But it just feels like almost there's like this film that's been lifted from my brain or my eyes and it just makes things a little bit clearer and easier to interpret and remember at least in my experience so I've loved taking creatine I only take three grams a day I know they say three to five grams um, but I didn't experience any side effects from it and I've only noticed positive things since taking it so I will continue to be taking that now the other reason that I wanted to take creatine too is because I love training legs and I love training my booty and I mean who doesn't want a little extra plump in the booty right so I do feel like whilst it hasn't been long enough to fully see I've taken before and after photos which I'm not sharing on here because no one wants to see my butt but I'm going to be at the end of six months I want to compare the photos to see if there's been any significant gains in my glutes and more so around the shape um, and like lifting of them I've changed my workouts to be focusing specifically on that too but it is supposed to help with all of these things so that's another reason that I wanted to take it in the first place and I can let you know in a couple months if it has made any difference all right so that is all for this video you know I'd love to hear in the comments if any of you are taking creatine at the moment and what your experience has been with it if you've noticed any difference or had any side effects from taking it or if you want to know anything else or any future topics please feel free to comment below and if you want more no fluff breakdowns of supplements and nutrition trends and lifestyle and health hacks then I've got more videos coming soon so make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn the notification bell on I'll see you next time